If it pleases the court, Your Honor, my name is Anthony, initial H, and I appear for the defendant in this Queensland criminal proceeding matter, 1 Marshall Ike. Your Honor, I have three submissions to tender for the court's consideration as the basis for an application to exclude evidence pursuant to section 590 capital A, capital A of the Queensland Criminal Code. Your Honor, my first submission is that the oral evidence of the admission given by Marshall Ike in the back of the police car should be excluded from being admitted into evidence. Instead, despite being prima facie admissible, it should be excluded under the judicial discretion of the unfairness or Christie discretion. Regarding the relevance of this evidence, Your Honor, I understand that this admission made by Marshall may be relevant to establishing the fact and issue of was it Marshall who in fact committed the alleged offences. I also understand that it directly and rationally affects the assessment of the probability of the existence of a fact and issue in the proceedings, and therefore it satisfies the Goldsmith and Sanderlands test. I also accept that if the evidence is in fact found to be relevant, no statutory exclusionary rules apply, and it is therefore prima facie admissible. My reasoning for submitting that this evidence should be excluded is that when Marshall was being questioned in the back of the police car, he was engaging in gratuitous concurrence, which resulted in him admitting to committing 84 counts of breaking and entering in the hopes of pleasing an authoritative figure. I submit that because Marshall was engaging in gratuitous concurrence when he made these omissions to committing alleged offences, it drastically reduces the reliability of this evidence under the principles in the Crown against Appleton. I therefore submit that it reduces the probative value of this evidence to the prosecution's case and is therefore capable of being excluded because it provides slight or insubstantial value to their case but has a prejudicial effect on Marshall's chance of having a fair trial and it can therefore be excluded under the judicial discretion as outlined in the case of the Crown against Hasler. The small probative value of this evidence's weight to the prosecution's case is substantially outweighed by its prejudicial effect to Marshall's chances of having a fair trial. It is therefore open to you, Your Honour, to exercise your judicial discretion to exclude this evidence under unfairness principles and the Christie discretion and in accordance with section 130 of the Queensland Evidence Act and the Australian case of the Crown against Lee. My second submission is that the documentary evidence of Marshall's later admission while in police custody should also be subject to a judicial discretion to exclude similar to cases such as Foster and the Queen and the Crown against Swaffield either discretion should be applicable for public policy reasons and in the interest of having a fair trial. The admission should still be excluded from being admitted into evidence for public policy reasons. This is because procedures under the Police Powers and Responsibilities Act were not adhered to. It is important to note that Marshall has been charged with an indictable offence under section 414 of the PPRA and he is a child according to Schedule 6 of the PPRA and Schedule 4 of the Youth Justice Act. Because of this, Section 421 applies to the officers who are questioning Marshall, and the procedures under this section, particularly Subsection 2 regarding allowing Marshall to speak to a support person who he has chosen, has not been followed. Marshall is also a Torres Strait Islander. Despite being a child making Section 420 of the Police Powers and Responsibilities Act, not prima facie applicable. It demonstrates how he falls within two categories of vulnerable um, persons, and therefore the procedures under the PPRA should have been adhered to, namely under sections 420 and 421, he should have been given a support person of his choice. Legal aid also should have been contacted, and Marshall should have been alerted to this under section 420 of the PPRA, which has scope to apply in a general sense because of him being from two vulnerable classes. The procedures in relation to the questioning of Marshall, as required by the PPRA, were also not properly carried out. Um, Marshall's questioning was required to be recorded under section 436.1 of the PPRA. There are exceptions to this rule under sub 2, 
but it doesn't appear in the apply. Marshall may have made an initial confession when first encountered by police and have continued to make confessions in the car where it may not have been practicable to record the confessions, but he was later brought back to the police station where it was, in fact, more than practicable for them to record them. Instead, sections were not recorded and were just listed as inaudible. So in accordance with sub 3 of section 436, this evidence should not be admissible because proper procedures were not followed. Because the procedures in the PPRA were not adhered to, it is open to your honour to exclude this evidence under the public policy discretion, which was first outlined in the case of the Crown Against Ireland and later outlined in the case of Bunny and Cross. To admit it would be risking the community's faith in a legal system. It would send a message that this kind of conduct by officers is permitted by law, which is too high of a price to pay, pursuant to the principles in the Crown Against Day and Annual and the Crown Against Ireland. It is therefore not in the interest of justice to admit this evidence, despite the fact it is allowed to be under section 439 of the PPRA. Furthermore, I submit for the court's consideration that the lack of compliance with the PPRA is the result of multiple deliberate breaches of law as can be shown by the sheer volume of the amount of laws that were not complied with. There was also no pressing circumstances warranting the lack of compliance. Finally, the conduct in getting the evidence of martial submission is a direct breach of the PPRA. The public policy discretion under section 98 of the Queensland Evidence Act should be exercised and the evidence should be excluded.